In IELTS reading, it's easy for test takers to make simple mistakes, which can bring your score down from an 8 to a 7 or even lower. Fortunately, in this video, I'm going to show you the 10 most common IELTS reading mistakes, so be sure to stick around. Let's start with the first mistake, writing a word instead of a letter on your answer sheet. In the paper-based test, you have to transfer your answers from the question booklet to the answer sheet during the time you're given for the reading test. And if you transfer the word incorrectly, it will be considered wrong, even if you got the answer right. Let me explain. So imagine you're transferring questions 29 to 33 to the answer sheet. What do you write on the answer sheet? The instruction says, choose the correct letter A to E for questions 29 to 33. Let's say you decide that the answer for question number 29 is C, Marcus Adams. And let's say that this is correct. Well done. So what do you write on your answer sheet in gap 29? Do you write C or Marcus Adams or C dot Marcus Adams? Well, if you wrote Marcus Adams or C dot Marcus Adams on your answer sheet, it would be considered incorrect. Always read the instructions fully. Mistake two, not reading the instructions fully. The instructions in IELTS reading can be confusing. If you miss an instruction or if you misinterpret an instruction, it could cost you. Let's take a closer look at those instructions for the matching question. Do you see that little NB? It says, you may use any letter more than once. This could be the difference between you getting full marks for this question or not. That means that you can use any of those letters more than once. For example, the answer to question 29 might be C and the answer to question 30 might also be C. You have to pay close attention to the instructions. Be sure to practice these matching questions at e2testprep.com so you can get a hang of it before test day. Mistake three, not understanding how many words you can or cannot write. This one is pretty confusing, but if you spend a little bit of time learning how it works, it'll be fine. This applies to any question where you need to write a word out in the test. For this sentence completion question, we need to write a word or words. Take a look at the instruction. Choose no more than three words and or a number from the text for each answer. What does that mean? This is not something you want to work out on test day. Okay, so I can write no more than three words and or a number. So I can write one word, two words, or three words. I can write one word and a number, two words and a number, three words and a number, or just a number. I really recommend you write out that instruction and sit there and focus on it now or after this video and actually write out all the different possibilities. Once you understand it, it's fine. But again, please don't try to work this out on test day. Mistake number four, using incorrect grammar to complete a sentence. Be very careful when you write a word that it's grammatically correct, okay? Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so this is sentence completion where we need to choose a word and or a number from the text. Here, I've written the word cow. Dairy cow produced the most amount of milk. This would be wrong. I need to make sure it's a plural noun. Cows. That would be correct. Have a look at number two. Soy milk is alternative to cow's milk. Well, I need the correct article there. An alternative. What about number three? Almond milk is made by mixing almonds water. Well, I need a preposition there and I need it to be the correct preposition. So I've made it mixing almonds with water. What about number four? Coconut milk is sweet than other milk products. That would be wrong because it needs to be a comparative adjective, sweeter than other milk products. These are just a few simple examples, but make sure you read the sentence after you've done it to make sure the grammar is correct. If the grammar is wrong, even if it's the right word, you'll lose a point. Mistake number five, using your own background knowledge to answer a question. 
Okay, so it's highly unlikely that on test day, you'll get a reading passage that you are personally an expert in. But it might happen. You never know. For example, you might be an expert in the New Caledonian Owlet Nightjar Bird. Or maybe you're an expert on the Spinning Jenny. Who knows? The point is, you should never use your own background knowledge to answer a question. Even if you are an expert on the Spinning Jenny and you get a reading passage about the Spinning Jenny, IELTS might actually change the facts in the article or in the passage. So even if you think you know the answer, it still might be wrong. Now this is kind of relieving because it means that all of the answers are always just in the passage and you need to read the passage to find the answers. Mistake number six, word spotting. Word spotting is when you read a question, you read the answer option, you see a word in the answer option, and you see the same word in the passage, and you think, that must be the correct answer. Not necessarily. For example, let's say you're doing a multiple choice question and in answer option B, you see the word environmental. And in the passage, you see it. There's the word environmental. That must be it. Yes, you found the answer. That was so easy. That's not actually the answer. What you've done there is you've word spotted. You've seen a word, you've seen the same word in the passage, and you've made the association that it's actually the correct answer. You're not reading for meaning. You can't just look for the answer. You need to read for the answer. And that's a very different thing. Mistake number seven, looking, not reading. This mistake is probably the main reason people fail IELTS reading. What they do is they look for the answer. They don't read for the answer. There's some actual great science here. Take a look at this image. It's from an eye tracking study that followed how a bad reader in IELTS uses his vision. This is for a single question, one question. Look at this person's attention. What are they paying attention to? Well, everything except for the meaning of the text. They're looking around, they're looking for the answer. They're not reading for the answer. That person moved their eyes around 470 times. They actually got the answer wrong as well. What you need to do when you read is move from left to right, reading word by word, phrase by phrase, sentence by sentence. Don't look, read. Mistake number eight, leaving questions unanswered. I actually think it's a good idea to skip answers that you don't know the answer to because you can come back later on and you might increase your chances of finding the right answer there. But if you run out of time or if you're running out of time, make sure you guess. There is no negative marking in IELTS reading. So if you guess, you might get it right. Who knows? Mistake number nine, not knowing what to do. You'd be surprised how many people prepare for IELTS without actually preparing for IELTS and they arrive on test day, open up the reading booklet, look at a question and think, how do I do this? So what you're looking at here is a match information question type. Imagine that you actually get this on test day. It's really confusing in the paper-based test. It's essential that you actually do some practice because this will boost your confidence and being familiar with the question types will make your time management much better. If you click the link in the description below, you can go across to E2 Test Prep and apply your knowledge to the practice questions to build your confidence long before test day. Mistake number 10, studying with YouTube only. E2 IELTS YouTube videos are awesome. There's no doubt about that. But this is passive learning. You're sitting there and you're receiving information. You're not actually doing anything at all. You need to put pen to paper. Watching YouTube videos is like learning to drive a car by watching somebody else drive a car. You'll never become a good car driver if you don't get into the driver's seat, hit the accelerator, change gears, and use the steering wheel yourself. You want to be an active IELTS learner, not a passive IELTS learner. That could be the difference between getting the score you want and not. All right, let me recap these 10 mistakes. One writing a word instead of a letter on your answer sheet. Two, 
not reading the instructions fully. Three, not understanding how many words you can and cannot write. Four, using incorrect grammar to complete a sentence. Five, using your own background knowledge to answer a question. Six, word spotting. Seven, looking, not reading. Eight, leaving questions unanswered. Nine, not knowing what to do. 10, studying with YouTube only. Do you know any other simple mistakes you can make in IELTS reading? If so, put them in the comments below. I'd like to hear what they are. Perhaps you've actually made them yourself. Remember, you can practice with our IELTS resources at e2testprep.com. Sign up for free today. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and good luck with the IELTS.